It's January 25th, and with the Lady Smith Archives, and Isabella Ouellette is the interviewer, and we're talking to Nadine Reed. Who was formerly a batty. Once a batty, always a batty. <laughs> or just plain batty. Just plain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how true that is. <laughs> well, actually, it's not even really batty. It's ebat. E-B-A-T. In Italy, it was E-B-A-T. Oh, really? Yes. So when they came to Canada, the baddies, they, somewhere along the way? Somewhere along the way it got twisted around. And that happened too because people were not as literate as we were. Some people no. didn't even know how to write. And my grandfather was the only one of the children that was actually born in Italy. The rest of them were born, I think, in uh, Wellington, I think, for extension. Um, but my, my grandfather was the one that was born in Italy. My great-grandparents were Alessi Batty and Maria Batty. And they came over from Italy with my grandfather, who was maybe two at the time, I do believe, I think. And uh, they came to Extension first and then came here and for the coal mining. would be mm, <coughs> in the late 19, uh, 1890s. My grandfather. Oh. He was, uh, let's see. He was really into sports, as well as all of the baddies are all into sports. All did very well in sports. And um, my grandfather worked in the mines, and then of course when the mines went down, they went into logging. Right. What's your grandfather's name? Tom. He was a very quiet man. Yeah. What about your grandma? My grandmother, she talked a lot. <laughs> and when she came here, <coughs> Uh, they actually lived in the tents down by the transfer before everything was built. And her last name was Bland. And I think, I think her father had something to do with um, the water system here in town. Wow. And then they eventually moved to Victoria, but she stayed here and married my grandfather. Let's talk about Dad then. <laughs> Dad. Yes. Okay. He used to tell me stories about growing up here. And, um, you know, when there was a lot of hotels here in town, and they were all abandoned. And so all of his friends and relatives as kids would use those hotels as their forts and play in them. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, he was growing up in the 1920s and, and 30s, and um, so they went through the Depression. And um, him and his uh, cousin, Pete Tassin, they boxed. And so they would uh, give um, shows on boxing and things, and people would throw them money. And in the Depression, he had enough money to buy himself a bike so he could deliver his papers. Um, but uh, since they're so rich to get a bike, they took my, my grandfather off of relief. And he didn't get any more relief money. Oh. Yes. So that's a story. <laughs> that must have been hard. I think so, yeah. Yeah, my grandfather then, um, he used to, uh, he was a barber in the pool hall, I think. That's how he made a little bit of money. Where would that have been located? What? The pool hall, because the pool hall changed in different places. Uh, above the wigwam, they had one there. Yeah. They had one above uh, where Barb's kitchen was. Yeah, I'm not sure which which pool hall it was that he uh, he used to cut hair years ago. So it'd be a pool hall, and there'd be a chair in there, and that's pretty handy. Just pretty an ordinary handy. chair, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. I think it was just an ordinary chair. Well, my dad became the champion of BC Champions. Dust weight. That's really light. How many years did he box? A few years. Him and, him and his, his cousin, Pete Tassin, they both boxed. And um, when he won uh, the BC Champions, uh, it was over in Vancouver. And he beat um, a fellow by the name of Phil Pony, who was, they were pretty famous Italians over from Vancouver. 
There is no date, but I do believe it's like 19, probably 1934. Yeah, there it is, BC champion. He has engaged in 35 fights and has yet to taste defeat. And what did you say about his he, defeat? He never was defeated. <laughs> he was a pretty tough guy. It's like, would he knock him out or just wear him out? or? I think he was pretty tough. I think he knocked him out. <laughs> was there like a boxing club in Ladysmith? At one time there was. I wonder if he was involved in that. Uh, no. No, it was after his time. Yeah, I do believe they boxed in the Aggie Hall. Mm -hmm. That's where they boxed. They would set up a rink? Yeah, oh. and, and of course in the Aggie Hall then, there, were, there used to be um, a balcony where people could sit as well. It, it, was, yeah. it was there even when I was a kid. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Basketball games and then there. Basketball, yeah. yeah. Dances, you could still sit up there and yeah. watch the people dance. You know when he hung up his gloves? or? Probably right after that. Well, did, so he, was he wasn't boxing when your mom and he were married? No, no, he wasn't boxing then, because he, they they went into basketball and and baseball and you know that that type of thing after that. And like, they they also won won uh, baseball. And yeah, I was going to say like I've always Mary's. said to all the people we've talked to, how softball <clears throat> has always been a dominant. Always, always. Did your dad play soccer at all? No, not soccer. So your dad and mom got married and they had... They had me. And are you the only child? Or? Yes, I am the only child. Their very first home was on uh, Bayview Road, going down the dip. Okay. It was their very first house. Is it still there? <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> it is still there. Okay. You can't really see it for all the, the bushes on the, on growing up there, but it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. So where did you grow up? I was born in that house, and then we moved uh, to French Street, up behind the Big O, and then to Simon Street. Awesome. Did, did you ever go to any of the hotels, or did you ever see a concert at the Aggie Hall for entertainment? No, I wasn't allowed to go. The only thing I did was go, go roller skating. <laughs> Kept you on a short leash, eh? Chris Dad's I'm an a, only <laughs> child, come on. And you got boxing in the family. <laughs> Who's gonna mess with that? Lori, her her husband. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he must have backed off a couple of times from your dad. Oh my god, my look he brought he brought some some um boxing gloves down to my dad's and right. a couple two pairs and thought he was gonna mess around. Well, my mom is screaming at my dad, don't kill him, don't kill him. <laughs> so, and my dad it was short and, and Laura's six foot one. So, you know, as soon as you get those boxing gloves on, he was, he, he was at it, man. It was in him. <laughs> so why did he stop? Did he ever tell you? Did, I mean, people must have asked him. Did he just kind of think, like, I reached the height of my career, you know? I or what, did he get busy with family? I think he he just got 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 busy with other things, you know, and and um, you know, looking towards going to work. He wasn't married then, of course. No, he wasn't. He wasn't, married he wasn't working then. He was just still young. He was just still young. He was just a kid, so he was probably into other sports, sporting things rather than the boxing, or it just could have faded away, the boxing. Well, Tasson, he, he boxed quite a while after that, didn't he? I'm not sure if he did or not, but they used to spar together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were cousins, and they sparred together. Now, as you mentioned briefly about the Depression and how, you know, your family lived through it, do, do, did, you, did they tell you any stories about how they got through the hard times? You said um, he lost his relief because of the money he'd gotten. And, you know, and the, the only thing I can remember is that, you know, they had... They had um, Porridge almost every morning, noon, and night. They ate a lot of porridge. That's what I remember. That's the old thing: peace porridge, hot peace porridge, cold peace porridge in the pot. Nine, nine days, days old. old. <laughs>